I got a braise a piece out of my truck here and I got the Supco umbrella up just as I'm working outside here because it's raining. So I'll show you guys exactly what I'm doing here. All right, so I had to cut out a whole piece of section of pipe. Somebody had used a one of those pre-made flares that you can buy at the supplier. Uh, it was leaking and it lost almost all of its charge because of that. So, and I'm, I'm also cutting out this ball valve contraption as well because I don't know if they wrap this thing when they braise it because who knows what went on with this job. So I'm cutting the whole section out. I'm gonna braise what I can out here because this is a sealed server room. I prefer not to light a torch in there. Then what we're gonna do is fit it together and we're gonna use some RLS fittings to press it into place. And we're gonna use our Navac flaring tool for the flare side as well. So I'll show you guys that once we go inside. So I have it all ready to go, wet rag on there uh, for protection. And I've also taken out the, the sensitive parts. There's like a, a little Teflon O-ring that I've taken out as well. So we can braise that up and I have my nitrogen we're just going to flow a little bit of nitrogen through that while I braise it up. So I got my piece made up. All right, we're going to flare this end and we're going to bend this end and then couple it with a press fitting from RLS. I'm going to get this piece bent. That way there's less fittings to worry about. There we are, bent. Put this into position. We'll find where we have to cut this and flare it. explain what happened up to this point so we had a leak all right um, I found the leak with the electronic leak detector and there was oil oil stains as well so that section of pipe was cut out after recovering the gas all right so what I found was whoever installed it used one of those pre-made flares you buy at the supply house I don't find those things are beefy enough they're not flared wide enough like a 45 especially for 410A. I would prefer not to use those and anybody else not to use them. So that's why I did that. So the reason why we did our, our brazing outside is because that's a sealed server room. If I braze inside, any fumes created, guess what? They stay in there because it's sealed. So that means I'm breathing in those fumes, the IT guy's breathing in those fumes. That's not something that I prefer to do. So all the brazing was done outside. We brought it in. We took it up and then made sure where we're gonna bend it, where we're gonna cut it to flare it. The bending takes away a fitting. Benders are awesome. Okay, I never owned a bender until um, recently and I'm finding the value in a bender is, is incredible. Then we flared it proper, checked it with a flare gauge and that was that tool I was using at the end where I dropped the flare into the gauge. If it sits on top without going through, it's flared properly. Okay, so at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the RLS tool and the RLS 3 8 coupling, we're gonna prep it all, and then we're gonna fit it together and crimp it or press it. And then that way there's no brazing done in that server room whatsoever. And we've created a less joints by bending it and we've created a better flare. All right, so let's, let's watch. So a couple of things happen there. One, we use a little bit of nylog on the seat where the two pieces made up. That's gonna help create a better seal. Nylog is 
refrigeration oil. Okay, for those of you who don't know, it is high viscosity refrigeration oil and it helps to seal. So I put it on the seat where the two pieces made up because that's where they seal, a little bit on the back of the flare. So when that nut is spinning, it's, it's being lubricated by the nylog as well. So then I took a pliers wrench, use a pliers wrench, use an adjustable, or better yet, even a, um, the correct size open-ended wrench. But the pliers wrench works really, really well. Like if you have like a, a good one, like a, like a Nipex, um, you wanna grab a hold of that. You don't wanna use pliers with teeth because it'll put teeth in, in the soft brass. And then that other wrench you've seen was the Yellow Jacket digital torque wrench and that was torqued to 29 foot pounds okay in the manual there's a range and it was torqued to 29 foot pounds so you always want to torque your flare nuts to the correct foot pounds in the manual okay to prevent a leak from happening with a good flare for me a little bit of nylog it will never leak Awesome. All right, so at this point, our, our system is sealed up. And that contraption I was using on the press fitting was to make sure it was pressed properly. Okay, if it goes over the press, it's pressed properly. If it doesn't go over, it needs to be pressed again. So, at that point, nitrogen went into the system, it was leak checked, soaped on all those joints we worked on, no bubbles, okay? Then we pulled the vacuum, the vacuum went on late in the afternoon, so we just ended up pulling the evacuation overnight got there in the morning we were around roughly 240 microns we we're good to go performed a rise test a rise test is when you shut your pump off when the system is isolated from the pump and you watch to see if there's a rise it's best to do this on an app like measure quick or the Tesla smart app in the graph portion uh, of the app because then you can see what's going on so if it rises up and flattens out under a thousand microns you're probably okay you're probably good if it continues to spike going up uh, most likely you've got a leak in that system. So basically that that rising and flattening, what, what that is, is off-gassing in the system perhaps. Maybe you have a little bit of refrigerant left in that oil. It's boiling off, causing it to rise. Maybe you have a little bit of moisture in the hygroscopic PoE because PoE likes to grab and hold moisture. Maybe there's a little tiny bit left in there. But if you rise, right, flatten before a thousand microns on these systems that's been already in use most of the times you're going to be okay so so that's what we did we put in 31 pounds of 410a we had the service checker tool come into play because it was a dakin unit service checker tools came into play by the dakin service tech he checked it all out everything was running awesome so that leak was fixed leak test charge um, or evacuation then charge and everything was running fine. So that's another job in the bag guys. And like I said, I didn't want to braze in that room, brazed outside, prepped everything and did one joint inside with the RLS press tool, which was a three eighths coupling and everything worked out great. So till the next one guys, happy HVACing.